Well, I heard the math that you used before as a, as a uh, an example, um, and you said 80% of a prorated salary. So, again, so you prorate for 70 games, and then you take 20% off that, and that's what the players yep. would make, but that's still 20% less than the 100% that they say that they negotiated in March, and the, that's my concern here, Carl, uh, that clearly that had there been a collective bargaining agreement already signed like the NFL was fortunate to have, maybe this acrimony wouldn't be happening, but w w we are here. My concern is that if the players keep saying, hey, March is March and we don't care what's happening now because it's March and you said yes in March and we said yes in March and it doesn't matter when we're sticking with March, that if the owners begin to think that they're negotiating against themselves, they'll walk. That, that, that's my concern. If they think that they're they, they don't have a partner across the way that's really negotiating, it, it's possible. I don't think that the commissioner would allow that because I don't think, having been through what he's been through uh, in '94, yep. um, you know, and the, and the right hand man is that he on his watch would want the game to stop. I don't think he's I don't think he's going to allow it. I think there's going to be baseball. To your point about the March agreement, and I do believe that this was subsequently discussed amongst the players. And, Tony, um, I'm not certain that they recognized the March agreement does stipulate, and most labor lawyers would tell you that March agreement does allow for a negotiation if the games are going to be played in front of empty stands. So while there was a 100% of a prorated salary, there is a clause in there which, if you read it, and most labor lawyers will tell you, uh, it says the commissioner has the right to renegotiate with the players on uh, on a potential concession on salary if we're playing in front of empty stands. We know we're doing that, especially to start. So I think that your your argument um, would would probably again. I'm not a labor lawyer. I know you are, <laughs> but I, I think we would, would, would lose in court because there is that stipulation. In front of nobody, the 100% prorated doesn't really stand. We have the right to go back and talk about concessions on that. Were you on Sports Center yet when there was that strike? When there was that? Were you oh, there? God, you God. were there. I was chasing owners around streets in That's New right. York and Toronto. Paul Beeston ducking in a lot of buildings. Bud Selig not wanting to talk about anything. A guy named Richard Ravitch who was oh, representing yeah. one of the sides Literally. who everyone thought was associated or related to me, which wasn't the case. <laughs> yeah, none of it's ever fun. And that's why, uh, you know, those of us that are intimately involved with this sport and not the NFL like you are, you know, you're up all night, not necessarily because the KBO is starting in an hour. You're up because you're dealing with a group that just doesn't seem to, to get it, especially in light of this. I, I think people would accept the fighting and the bickering and the acrimony if this was a four- or five-year deal for the future CBA. This is literally about getting back on the field in 2020, and the lines have been so blurred and the circles have become so concentric they can't see the, the forest, you know, through the trees. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.